I ask you to listen closely, for I am about to reveal to you three things, three habitual patterns of thought and action that you must cease immediately if you truly desire to be happier. These are not mere suggestions, my dear friends. They are imperatives, cosmic laws that govern the very nature. The first thing you must stop doing is living in the past. Oh, how we cling to our memories, both sweet and bitter. We replay old conversations, relive past hurts, and reminisce about bygone glories. But I tell you this, the past is nothing more than a shadow, a fleeting illusion that holds no power over your present moment. When you dwell in the past, you deny yourself the gift of the present. You rob yourself of the infinite possibilities that exist in the eternal now. Every moment you spend reliving yesterday is a moment stolen from your glorious future. Okay, you ever notice how your memories change over time? How events that once seemed traumatic lose their sting? Or how moments of joy become tinged with melancholy? This is because your memories are not fixed. They are malleable, shaped by your current state of consciousness. The past, my dear friends, exists only in your imagination. It is a story you tell yourself, a narrative you've constructed to make sense of your experiences. But here's the liberating truth. You have the power to rewrite that story at any moment. Instead of living in the past, I urge you to use your magnificent imagination to create the future you desire. For your imagination is the workshop wherein you forge the life you wish to live. It is the God-given gift that allows you to transcend your current circumstances and step into a new reality. When you catch yourself dwelling on past events, gently but firmly redirect your attention to the present moment. Feel the aliveness coursing through your body. Notice the beauty that surrounds you. And then, with the full force of your imagination, project yourself into the future you desire. See yourself living the life you've always dreamed of. Feel the emotions of joy, fulfillment, and abundance as if they were already yours. For in truth they are. The moment you can feel it real, it becomes real in your world. Remember, the world is yourself pushed out. Your outer reality is nothing more than a reflection of your inner state. So when you free yourself from the shackles of the past, when you stop dragging the dead weight of yesterday into your today, you open yourself to a world of infinite possibility. The second thing you must stop doing if you want to be happier is comparing yourself to others. Oh, how insidious this habit is. It creeps into our thoughts, unbidden, poisoning our joy and stifling our potential. You see someone with a bigger house, a more prestigious job, a seemingly perfect relationship, and you think, why not me? What's wrong with me? But I tell you this, there's nothing wrong with you. You are perfect, whole, and complete exactly as you are. Comparison is a thief of joy because it denies the fundamental truth of your being. You are a unique expression of the divine, a singular manifestation of God's infinite creativity. There has never been, nor will there ever be, another you. When you compare yourself to others, you're attempting to measure yourself against an illusion. For you can never truly know another person's inner world. Their struggles, their fears, their doubts. You see, only the surface, the carefully curated image they present to the world. More than you engage in comparison, you're operating from a mindset of lack. You're assuming that there's a limited amount of success, happiness, or love in the world, and that someone else's gain must be your loss. But this couldn't be further from the truth. The universe is abundant beyond measure. There's more than enough for everyone. Your neighbor's success does not diminish your own potential for greatness. In fact, their achievement is proof that what you desire is possible. Instead of comparing yourself to others, I urge you to compare yourself only to the person you were yesterday. Focus on your own growth, your own journey. Celebrate your progress, no matter how small it may seem. Remember, you are not in competition with anyone else. You are here to be the fullest, most authentic expression of yourself. And that, my dear friends, is more than enough. When you catch yourself falling into the trap of comparison, pause. Take a deep breath. And then with all the love and compassion you can muster, remind yourself of your own unique gifts your own special purpose in this world. For you are a child of the infinite, 
endowed with limitless potential. You have within you the power to create worlds, to manifest your deepest desires. Why then would you waste your precious energy comparing yourself to anyone else? The third and final thing you must stop doing if you want to be happier is resisting what is. This perhaps is the most challenging of all, for it goes against our very nature as human beings. We are conditioned from birth to fight against discomfort, to push away pain, to resist anything that doesn't align with our desires. But in doing so, we create a constant state of inner conflict, a war within ourselves that robs us of our peace and happiness. What do I mean by resisting what is? It's the voice in your head that says, this shouldn't be happening. It's the tension in your body when things don't go according to plan. It's the emotional turmoil you experience when reality doesn't match your expectations. But here's the paradox. My friends, peer resist persists. The more you fight against your current reality, the more power you give it. The more you deny what is, the more it defines you. Instead, I invite you to embrace a radical acceptance of the present moment. This doesn't mean you approve of everything that happens or that you become passive in the face of injustice. Rather, it means you acknowledge the reality of what is without adding the extra layer of suffering that comes from resistance. When you accept what is, you free up an enormous amount of energy, energy that you can then channel into creating the reality you desire. For remember, your power lies not in controlling external circumstances, but in choosing your response to them. Every experience, every circumstance in your life is an opportunity for growth and expansion. Even the most challenging situations carry within them the seeds of transformation. When you resist what is, you miss these opportunities. You remain stuck in a state of frustration and discontent. But when you accept what is, you open yourself to the wisdom and guidance of the universe. You align yourself with the flow of life rather than struggling against it. And in doing so, you tap into a wellspring of peace and happiness that is your natural state of being. Now I can hear some of you thinking, but Neville, how can I accept things that are painful, unpleasant? How can I be happy when life is difficult? My dear friends, acceptance does not mean resignation. It doesn't mean you give up on your dreams or settle for less than you desire. Acceptance is simply the first step in the process of transformation. When you accept what is, you are acknowledging the current state of affairs without judgment. You are saying, this is how things are right now, and that's okay. From this place of acceptance, you can then choose how you want to respond. Remember, you are not a victim of your circumstances. You are the creator of your reality. But to create effectively, you must first accept the raw materials you have to work with. A sculptor doesn't complain about the block of marble. He sees within it the potential for a masterpiece. So too must you learn to see the potential for beauty and growth in every situation. No matter how challenging it may seem on the surface, for everything in your life is serving your highest good, even if you can't see how in the moment. When you stop resisting what is, you enter into a state of flow. You become like a river moving effortlessly around obstacles rather than crashing against them. You can serve your energy for what truly matters, the joyful creation of your desired reality. Now, my dear friends, I want you to take a moment to reflect on these three things. Living in the past, comparing yourself to others, and resisting what is. Can you see how they've been robbing you of your happiness? Can you feel the weight they've been placing on your spirit? Imagine for a moment what your life would be like if you could let go of these habits. Picture yourself fully present in each moment, appreciating your unique journey and accepting life as it unfolds. Can you feel the lightness, the joy, the sense of freedom that comes with this way of being? This is not just a pleasant fantasy, my friends. This is your birthright. This is the natural state of being that awaits you when you align yourself with the truth of who you are. You see, happiness is not something to be pursued or achieved. It is not a destination to be reached. Happiness is your natural state of being, your divine inheritance. It is who you are at your core, beneath the layers of conditioning and false beliefs. The three things we've discussed, 
living in the past, comparing yourself to others, and resisting what is, are like clouds that obscure the sun of your true nature. When you stop doing these things, you're not so much creating happiness as you're allowing your innate happiness to shine through. Now, I know that breaking these habits may seem challenging. After all, they've likely been with you for many years, perhaps even decades. But I want you to know that change is not only possible, it is inevitable when you align yourself with the truth. Remember, you are not your habits. You are not your past. You are not your circumstances. You are a divine being, infinitely powerful and eternally free. You have the ability to choose your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions in each moment. So how do we begin this transformation? How do we stop these three happiness, robbing habits, and step into the fullness of our being? The key, my dear friends, lies in your imagination. For your imagination is not mere fantasy or idle daydreaming. It is the very essence of creation, the God force within you that shapes your reality. Instead of living in the past, use your imagination to create a compelling future. See yourself as you wish to be. Confident, joyful, successful. Feel the emotions of already being that person. For remember, to the subconscious mind, there is no difference between a vividly imagined experience and the real one. Instead of comparing yourself to others, imagine yourself as the best version of yourself. See yourself growing, evolving, becoming more of who you truly are with each passing day. Feel the satisfaction of personal progress, the joy of self-discovery. And instead of resisting what is, use your imagination to see the perfection in each moment. Imagine that everything happening in your life is conspiring for your highest good. Feel the peace that comes with trusting in the wisdom of the universe. As you do this, you'll begin to notice a shift in your consciousness. The old habits will begin to fall away, not through force or struggle, but through the natural expansion of your awareness. You see, my friends, you cannot solve a problem at the level of the problem. You must rise above it. And that is exactly what we're doing when we use our imagination in this way. We're elevating our consciousness, aligning ourselves with a higher truth. Now I want to address something that may be coming up for some of you. You might be thinking, but Neville, this all sounds well and good. But what about the real problems in my life? What about my financial struggles? My health issues, my relationship problems. There are no real problems. Only opportunities for growth and expansion. What you perceive as problems are simply aspects of your current reality that don't align with your desires. And remember, your current reality is nothing more than a shadow of your past thoughts and beliefs. When you change your thoughts, when you shift your beliefs, your reality must change to match. It's a cosmic law as certain as gravity. The outer world must conform to your inner world. So instead of focusing on your problems, I urge you to focus on the solution. Use your imagination to see yourself living the life you desire. Feel the emotions of already having what you want. Do this with consistency and conviction, and watch as your outer world begins to shift. This is not magical thinking, my friends. This is the very essence of creation. For you are not a helpless victim of circumstance, but a powerful creator, shaping your reality with every thought, every feeling, every belief. When you stop living in the past, you free yourself to create a new future. When you stop comparing yourself to others, you allow yourself to step into your unique greatness. And when you stop resisting what is, you align yourself with the flow of life, opening yourself to infinite possibilities. These three shifts in consciousness are the key to unlocking a life of true happiness and fulfillment. They are the pathway to realizing your divine nature and living from a place of power and purpose. Now, I know that this may seem like a lot to take in. You may be wondering how to implement these changes in your daily life. So let me offer you some practical advice. First, cultivate awareness. Begin to notice when you're falling into these old patterns. When you catch yourself living in the past, comparing yourself to others, or resisting what is, simply acknowledge it without judgment. Awareness is the first step to change. Then gently we redirect your thoughts. If you find yourself dwelling on the past, 
Bring your attention to the present moment. Notice your breath. Feel the sensations in your body. Observe the world around you with fresh eyes. If you catch yourself comparing yourself to others, shift your focus to your own journey. Celebrate your own progress, no matter how small. Remind yourself of your unique gifts and purpose. And if you notice yourself resisting what is, take a deep breath and practice acceptance. Say to yourself, this is how things are right now, and that's okay. Then use your imagination to see the potential for growth and transformation in the situation. Remember, my friends, these are not one-time actions, but ongoing practices. It's about cultivating a new way of being, a new relationship with yourself and the world around you. As you continue these practices, you'll begin to notice subtle shifts in your experience. You'll find yourself feeling more present, more peaceful, more alive. You'll start to see opportunities where before you saw only obstacles. You'll feel a growing sense of trust in yourself and in the benevolence of the universe. These shifts may be small at first, but don't underestimate their power. For just as a tiny seed contains within it the potential for a mighty oat, these small changes in consciousness contain within them the power to completely transform your life. You see, happiness is not something that happens to you, but something that happens through you. It's not dependent on external circumstances, but on your inner state of being. When you align yourself with the truth of who you are, when you live from a place of presence, self-acceptance, and trust, happiness becomes your natural state. Now, I want to address another question that may be arising in your minds. You might be wondering, but never. What about my responsibilities? What about the challenges I face in my daily life? How can I focus on these inner changes when I have so much to do in the outer world? My dear friends, this is a common misconception. Many people believe that spiritual growth and practical living are separate. That we must choose between being spiritual and being successful in the world. But nothing could be further from the truth. The changes we're discussing, letting go of the past, ceasing comparison, accepting what is, are not about withdrawing from the world. They're about engaging with it more fully, more authentically, more powerfully. When you stop living in the past, you become more effective in the present. You're able to respond to situations with clarity and wisdom, rather than reacting based on old patterns and wounds. When you stop comparing yourself to others, you free up enormous amounts of energy. Energy that you can then channel into pursuing your own goals, developing your own talents, and making your unique contribution to the world. And when you stop resisting what is, you become more adaptable, more resilient. You're able to navigate challenges with grace and ease, finding creative solutions where before you saw only problems. In other words, these inner changes don't take you away from your life. They enhance every aspect of it. They allow you to show up more fully, to engage more deeply, to live more authentically. How much more effective would you be at work if you weren't constantly replaying past mistakes? or worrying about future outcomes? How much more fulfilling would your relationships be if you weren't always comparing them to others or to some idealized notion of how they should be? How much more joy would you find in your daily life if you weren't constantly resisting what is? These changes in consciousness ripple out into every area of your life, transforming not just how you feel, but how you think, how you act, and ultimately what you create in the world. Now, I want to take a moment to address something that may be coming up for some of you. You might be thinking, this all sounds wonderful, Neville, but it also sounds like a lot of work. Do I really have to constantly monitor my thoughts and redirect my focus? Yes, it does require effort, especially at first. But it's the most worthwhile effort you can make. For you are not just changing your thoughts. You are reshaping your entire reality. And here's the beautiful thing. As you continue this practice, it becomes easier. What once required conscious effort becomes second nature. The new patterns of thought and behavior become habitual, just as the old ones were. You see, my friends, you are constantly creating your reality, whether you're aware of it or not. Every thought, every feeling, every belief is shaping your experience of life. So why not do it consciously? 
Why not take charge of this creative process and shape your reality according to your highest desires? This is the true meaning of empowerment. It's not about controlling the outside world, but about mastering your inner world. For when you master your inner world, the outer world naturally falls into alignment. Now, I want to circle back to our original topic. Happiness, we've explored how stopping these three things, living in the past, comparing yourself to others, and resisting what is, can lead to greater happiness. Now, I want to delve deeper into what happiness really is. You see, many people think of happiness as a fleeting emotion. A temporary state that comes and goes based on external circumstances. But true happiness, the kind of happiness we're talking about here, is something much deeper and more enduring. This happiness is not dependent on what you have or what you achieve. It's not about feeling good all the time or never experiencing negative emotions. Rather, it's a fundamental sense of okayness, a deep trust in life and in yourself. When you stop living in the past, you open yourself to the joy of the present moment. You become available to the beauty and wonder that surrounds you right now. This is not just about feeling good. It's about being fully alive, fully present to the miracle of existence. When you stop comparing yourself to others, you discover the joy of being yourself. You begin to appreciate your unique journey, your unique gifts, your unique purpose. This is not just about self-esteem. It's about self-realization, about becoming who you truly are. When you stop resisting what is, you find peace. Not the passive peace of resignation, but the active peace of alignment with life. This is not just about reducing stress. It's about tapping into the flow of the universe, about co-creating with life itself. This kind of happiness is your natural state. It's who you are beneath the layers of conditioning beneath the false beliefs and limiting patterns. When you stop doing these three things, you're not so much creating happiness as you're allowing your innate happiness to shine through. Now, I want to address a concern that may be arising for some of you. You might be thinking, but Neville, if I stop resisting what is, if I accept everything as it is, won't I become complacent? Won't I lose my motivation to improve my life? This is a common misunderstanding, my friends. Acceptance does not mean inaction. It doesn't mean you approve of everything or that you don't seek to create change. Rather, acceptance is the foundation from which effective action springs. When you accept what is, you see reality clearly, without the distortions of resistance. From this place of clarity, you can then choose how you want to respond. You can decide what actions to take, what changes to make, from a place of wisdom rather than reaction. Moreover, when you accept what is, you free up the energy that was previously tied up in resistance. This energy can then be channeled into creative action, into manifesting your desires, into shaping your reality according to your highest vision. Remember, my dear friends, you are not separate from the universe. You are an integral part of it, a unique expression of its infinite creativity. When you align yourself with the flow of life, when you accept what is, and then consciously choose your response. You become a co-creator with the universe. This is true empowerment. This is true freedom. This is the pathway to lasting happiness. Now, as we near the end of our time together, I want to leave you with a powerful practice that encapsulates everything we've discussed. This is a practice you can return to again and again. A practice that will help you stop these three happiness robbing habits and step into the fullness of your being. Here's what I want you to do. Each night, as you lie in bed preparing for sleep, close your eyes and imagine yourself as you wish to be. See yourself living the life you desire, free from the burdens of the past, free from comparison. Feel the emotions of already being this person. Feel the joy, the peace, the sense of fulfillment. Let these feelings permeate every cell of your body. Now, here's the crucial part. As you drift off to sleep, carry this feeling with you. For in sleep, your conscious mind rests, and your subconscious mind is most receptive to new impressions. Do this night after night, and you will begin to see changes in your waking life. You'll find yourself naturally letting go of the past, ceasing comparison, and accepting what is. You'll find yourself responding to life with greater ease and grace. You'll find happiness welling up from within you. 
not as a fleeting emotion, but as your fundamental state of being. Remember, my dear friends, you're not bound by your past, by others' opinions, or by your current circumstances. You are bound only by your own imagination, and your imagination is limitless. So dare to imagine a new way of being. Dare to see yourself as the divine, powerful creator that you truly are. Dare to live from a place of presence, self-acceptance, and trust in the benevolence of the universe. For when you do this, when you align yourself with the truth of who you are, you open yourself to a happiness beyond anything you've previously known. A happiness that is not dependent on external circumstances, but that wells up from within you as naturally as breath. This, my dear friends, is your birthright. This is the life you were meant to live. And it begins now in this moment with your decision to stop these three things and to step into the fullness of your being. Remember, the power is within you. The kingdom of heaven is within you. You are the operant power in your world. So use this power wisely, use it lovingly, use it joyfully, and know that as you do, you are not just transforming your own life, but you are contributing to the transformation of the entire world. For as you raise your consciousness, you raise the consciousness of all humanity. This is the great work, my friends. This is why you're here. To remember who you truly are, to embody your divine nature, and to shine your light brightly in the world. So go forth from here with newfound awareness with renewed commitment to your own growth and happiness. Stop living in the past, stop comparing yourself to others, stop resisting what is. And in doing so, step into the magnificent, joyful, abundantly happy being that you truly are. For you are not just a drop in the ocean, my dear friends. You are the entire ocean in a drop. You contain within you all the power, all the wisdom, all the love of the universe. And when you align yourself with this truth, when you live from this place of knowing, there is nothing you cannot be, do, or have. This is the promise of life. This is the gift that awaits you. And it is yours for the taking right here, right now. So let us end our time together with a moment of silence. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And feel the truth of who you are. Feel the happiness that is your natural state. Feel the power that resides within you. And as you open your eyes, carry this feeling with you. Let it inform your thoughts, your words, your actions. Let it shape your reality. For you are the creator of your world. You are the author of your story. And the pen is in your hand. Write beautifully, my dear friends. Write with love, with joy, with the full knowledge of your divine nature. For this is your time. This is your moment. This is your life. And it is beautiful beyond measure. Thank you. And may your journey be blessed with infinite happiness and love.